Are you tired of hand watering your rows of plants? Are you sick of seeing fungus on your plants caused by inefficient overhead watering? Today, I'm going to show you how to quickly set up and install an automatic drip irrigation system for longer rows of in-ground beds. In this case, a longer row is anything longer than about 30 feet, which is the maximum length for one quarter inch drip line. What we have is two rows. They're going to be peonies, and that's what we're installing the drip irrigation for. Each row is 40 feet long, and we're going to use two 40 foot lengths of drip tape on each row for a total of 160 feet of drip tape used. We're putting one on either side of the plant just to ensure that both sides of the plant's root zone receive water. Believe it or not, these are all the parts we're gonna to use to install the system today. This makes it easy to design, order, and install. We just gave a quick flow rate test of our water source and got about 350 gallons per hour. That's gonna be more than enough to feed our four rows of drip tape. Our drip tape has 12 inch spacing and each emitter in the drip tape puts out about 0.46 gallons per hour, which will make its total flow rate just shy of 75 gallons per hour. The flow rate test is very easy to do, quick two-step process. All you need is a timer and a bucket. If you'd like to see how to do it yourself, check out our video there in the top right. We'll walk you through step by step. Now that we have our flow rate, let's create a sketch of the system. We'll start with the water source. And that's where we connect our head assembly. The head assembly usually consists of things like a backflow preventer, filter, pressure regulator, and the adapter that connects your mainline tubing to the water source. After that, we'll draw in our mainline tubing, get it where it needs to be in the field. We'll draw in our tape lines connected to our mainline tubing. We'll notate any fittings we need, like takeoff adapters, end caps, and the tubing tee so we can split our mainline in two different directions. And that's our design for our drip tape system for our peonies. We decided to put drip tape on both sides of our peony rows. The reason is peony roots can get pretty big, topping out at about three feet when fully mature. Having a run of tape on both sides of the peony plant ensures that we deliver water to the entire root zone. If you'd like an in-depth step-by-step guide to designing your own drip irrigation system, check out our video there to the top right or in the description below. So just like I like to do on most of my projects, I'm gonna open the box and organize my parts into like parts. So I can keep track of where things at and when I need a part, I know exactly where to go to get it. Believe it or not, this is all it's gonna take. Let's see what we have here. Got a hundred feet of drip tape. Here's our 50 foot of mainline tubing. Our couple rows that we're irrigating are really close to the spigot, so we didn't need much tubing. Here is our head assembly parts. I brought this gooseneck fitting here so I could turn the hose bib 45 degrees. Here's the timer that we're gonna use today. Timers are optional, so you don't have to have one. So they're not included in the kit, but they're great for automating your system. Let it handle all the watering cycles on and off for you. You can turn on your spigot, program your timer, and it will take care of all the rest. Here's our backflow preventer for the head assembly. This prevents irrigation water from potentially flowing back into the house or structure's water supply. Here's the T-filter we're using. These keep debris, contaminants, and things like that from getting into the irrigation system, potentially causing clogs or other problems. Next up in our head assembly is our pressure regulator. This one here is 15 PSI. But this keeps our dripper, the emitters inside the tape, dripping evenly and uniform across the entire rows. And the last part of our head assembly is the hose by tubing adapter. This is the part that connects our mainline tubing to the rest of the head assembly. I just put this on the end of the pressure regulator, connect my half inch tubing mainline right here, and then it's connected to the water source. I also brought this hose by tubing adapter just in case we need to make a turn. If your head assembly on the hose bib ends like pretty much right at the ground, it could be hard to use the straight one I just showed you. So I grabbed this elbow one as well, just in case. Next up is our half inch mainline end cap. When our mainline ends, we use this here to cap it off. You just put the tubing on this end of it and you got this threadable cap here to stop the flow of water and pressurize your lines. And I brought this permalock tubing tee. We're gonna use this to split our mainline in two different directions to build our header row. Next up is our stake for our half inch main line. Use these to stake them into the ground, holds it in place. Really helps, especially when you're first laying out your main line because the tubing comes on a coil that wants to bend. The stakes help hold it in place where you want it while you install the system. Can also help to leave the tubing out in the sun so that it softens up a bit. But yeah, the stakes are almost a must. Next up here are our heavy duty wire anchors. It's pretty handy to stake or anchor drip tape in place so that when it gets pressurized, it doesn't move out of place or get displaced from the row and the plants that you want to water. Next up is our punch. We're going to use this to punch holes in the main line so we can connect our tape by barb takeoff adapters. Those are the parts that I'll show you next 
that connect the drip tape to the main line so that the main line can feed the drip tape. Next up is our takeoff adapter, the part that connects our drip tape to our main line. The barb on this end goes into the hole we punched into the half inch main line. The drip tape itself connects to this end. Now this one is kind of handy because it's also an on off valve. If you want to turn off a row of drip tape because you've harvested the plant or that row no longer needs water, all you have to do is turn it. We do have them available without the on off valve as well if you prefer. Here's our drip tape end caps. Just like the tubing end cap, it has a threadable cap here at the end and this closes off our tape rows so they can become pressurized. And last are goof plugs. These are handy if I punch a hole in a bad spot and make a mistake. This will plug up that hole without having to repair the whole line. So remember when I mentioned I wasn't sure how much space you're going to be working with here at the hose bib. And you can see it does turn out to be pretty low to the ground. But strangely, the hose bib itself is kind of facing up like this. So if I were to build my head assembly like this, it would come out at kind of an awkward angle, including being a trip hazard. For that reason, I am gonna use the 45 degree angle gooseneck here as the very first part. So I can kind of tilt it back towards the ground. All right, let's install the head assembly. This is the correct order you wanna install your parts in. You start with the timer, now the backflow preventer, and now our filter to make sure we capture debris and contaminants. We want to make sure we get the debris filtered out of the water source so that our drip tape doesn't become clogged. And finally, our pressure regulator to maintain downstream pressure at 15 PSI. So we want it to be about 15 PSI so that we have nice, even, uniform watering. It keeps all downstream pressure at 15 PSI. Drip tape also has pretty thin walls at 15 mil thick. And to give you an idea, one mil is one thousandth of an inch. So 15 mil is still only 15 thousandths of an inch thick. So you want to keep that pressure low so it doesn't burst or rupture. After that, I'm going to put on my elbow hose by tubing adapter and our mainline tubing will be pretty much starting right at the ground exactly like we want. That brings our head assembly pretty close to the ground, just a few inches from the ground here where we'll connect our half inch mainline. And that's it. That's our head assembly. Let's get our mainline tubing connected here. Make sure you get the tubing on all the way over the barb so you get a good watertight seal. Then go ahead and twist the locking nut to secure the tubing in place. Now we got our mainline connected. We're going to run it over to our two rows and we're going to tee it off. And that's where we'll connect our drip tape. We let our tubing warm up in the sun for a bit. You can see it come uncoiled pretty good from that tight coil it was in earlier. All I'm going to do now is bring the mainline tubing out here to right between the two rows. That's where I'm gonna cut into the main line and install a T so I can run the main line to the base of each row here and use it as our header row. Then connect our drip tape, run our drip tape, cap it off, throw in a few stags and we're pretty much done already. A quick tip, you can see my main line, even though it's been warmed by the sun as much straight as it was, still is a little bit curved. It could be difficult to work with. We're gonna stake the tubing as we go along. That way it's stable as we work with it. We can get a good idea of where we want to install our fittings. I have my main line come in and then it'll be able to go out each side to cover the base of these rows. Our T connects the same way our hose by tubing adapter did. Push the tubing on all the way over the barb, turn the locking nut to secure it in place. First connecting the tubing for this header row. You can see how easy that was to get the tubing on connected to the permalock fitting. Anyone who's used compression fittings can tell you these are significantly easier. Best of all, they're fully reusable. With a compression fitting, it's often one and done use. You have to cut your tubing to remove it. With these, you can just pull the tubing off the barb and completely reuse the fitting as you see fit. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our end cap here at the end of this header row so the line can be pressurized. Now that we've got the end cap on, I'm gonna go ahead and stake this in place as well. Okay, now let's go get our punch, punch a hole here at our main line, and run our drip tape rows down. Our peonies are centered here in these rows, so I'm gonna punch a hole about right here, just about two to three inches off the center of the plant, and similar on this side, about two or three inches away from the plant. That way we have emitters on both sides of the plant so we can get good coverage on that whole root zone. And now we're gonna push in the barbed end of our takeoff adapter into the holes we just punched. Once that's done, we're already ready to connect our drip tape. There we go. Nice and easy. Now we're ready to go ahead and install our drip tape. First, I'm going to cut the bands that are here so I can just unroll it and walk it down the row where I'll put the end cap in at the end. After that, we'll probably stake it in place, maybe one stake at the start, one stake at the end, 
and our drip tape line will be installed. So as you can see, drip tape is flat when it's not pressurized. This makes it very flexible. Despite this, drip tape has to be used in straight lines because when it's pressurized, it's no longer flat and then it's no longer flexible. Remember I mentioned the very thin walls on this. As you can see, the walls are very thin, which means you need to be cautious with foot traffic, landscape maintenance tools, and that's also why we use a very low pressure pressure regulator. You'll see holes across its length. Well, those are the actual emitters. Beneath those holes are emitters, it's not just a hole. The emitter itself helps control the release of water with the labyrinthine passage. When the water is full in the drip tape and it hits the end cap, it'll fill this up and it'll take on its more rounder oval shape when it's filled with water. Now we're gonna connect this end of our drip tape to our drip tape takeoff adapter, and I'm just gonna unroll it right down the row. I'm just pushing on the drip tape to make sure it's open enough to slip on over the bar. You want your emitters to be facing up. Remember the emitter I showed you earlier, the, the hole where the emitter's underneath? The two lines will also show you where the top of the drip tape is, and that part should always be facing up. So I'm gonna squeeze on my drip tape to give it a nice little bit of a round shape so it gets on over the barb. Just like with the permalock fittings, once on over the barb, simply twist the locking nut and done. Let's unroll this and walk it down the line. We're gonna cut it right here and install our end cap. Just like with the takeoff adapter, I'm gonna squeeze it so it takes on its round oval shape. Push it on all the way over the barb, turn our locking nut. It's one tip, you don't wanna cut right at the end of an emitter, it could block the tape from going on over the barb. So give yourself a few inches to work with there at the end of the tape. Now let's go ahead and stake it in place. I'm gonna use my heavy duty wire anchor to stake my tape in place. We'll do it a little bit different than I've been staking the tubing. This I'm gonna put on right over the top of the fitting itself. We're gonna repeat that same process here on the second bed. Assembling our header, punching in our takeoff adapters, running our tape down, capping it off, and putting in a couple anchors. Drip tape is often used in agricultural applications. We're talking rows five, six, seven, eight hundred feet long. We're just doing it on some smaller ones because we don't want to spend too much on half inch drip line. It's too long for quarter inch drip line, so the drip tape makes a perfect compromise here. It can be used in incredibly long rows. It even comes in larger sizes for longer rows than that. We've seen rows up to a quarter of a mile or longer using seven eighths drip tape. This is five eighths drip tape, but even that is good for hundreds of feet. Just walking this to untwirl it to make sure all of our emitters are facing up. You can see I have a little bit of drip tape left here. That's great, we use this to make repairs. We're now gonna do our system walkthrough. We're just gonna walk through, check our connections, make sure they're secure. After that, we're gonna do our system flush. Our system flush is where we remove all the end caps on the system and then run water through it. What this does is dislodges any debris that got in during installation. And some will, no matter how careful you are, some debris will get in when you're installing in nature. We let the debris come out the end during our system flush and then we're gonna run it for its first cycle. Okay, now that we have the caps off, let's run water through the lines. While you're flushing, if you don't get water coming out of all the end caps, just go ahead and throw the caps back on the ones nearest the water source, and that'll allow the water to have sufficient flow and pressure to make it to the ones that are further away. Just to recap, we installed our head assembly, we ran our main line and our header rows, we connected our drip tape using our takeoff adapters and capped them off at the end. We then did a flush on our system to get any and all debris out, recapped our system, and now we're ready to do our first watering cycle. During our watering cycle, we're gonna walk the system, check our connections for leaks, make sure all our emitters are dripping, and check any of the fittings for leaks. Excellent. We have an entire drip irrigation system ready to automatically keep our plants healthy and thriving. And that's how you install drip irrigation for longer rows and in-ground beds. Now our two rows of peonies will have an opportunity to thrive. A system like this isn't just reserved for professionals and industry insiders. Even a beginner DIYer can quickly set up and install and enjoy its many benefits. If you'd like to see the parts we use for this system, you can find it in the description below or here at the top right. If you're considering a drip tape irrigation system and would like more detailed information, you can start with our Growing with Drip Tape series right here.